When you hear the words Fatebringer, Black Hammer, Vex Mythoclast, Ex Machina, what do you think? Personally, I think of some pretty dang good raid loot. Now what do you think of when you hear literally any name of Destiny 2's raid loot? Disappointed! There's a few standouts with exotics like 1k voices and anarchy, but rarely is anybody using raid legendaries inside of PvP or PvE. In year 1, Midnight Coup was about the only raid legendary that saw any widespread use, an inaugural address has seemingly been able to stand the test of time over the years, but raid legendaries, generally speaking, are usually worse than most world drops. And I don't remember the last time I used a raid legendary. So what do we run raids for these days? Oh yeah, a pinnacle drop. I forget that the endless power grind is the sole focus of this game. Raids in Destiny used to have the top tier weaponry, the top tier armor, and the highest chances for rare exotics. Running a raid used to be worth it. The loot pool wasn't oversaturated with hundreds of other better weapons to drop from literally anywhere. If you wanted the god rolled hand cannon, you ran the raid. If you wanted that badass exotic, you ran the raid instead of just buying a season pass. The more I really think about it, the more I realize loot in Destiny 2 is just awful. It's not about the quantity of drops and how many exotics release in a season. It's about the quality, and Destiny 2 is about as low quality as you can get. I want to focus on raid loot specifically in this video because I think raids need more incentive than just a pinnacle drop moving forward into Beyond Light. So let's start with the most obvious sought after loot, the weapons. Legendary weapons from raids are unique, or at least they should be. In Destiny 2 the most unique thing about a raid weapon is its appearance, and that's great and all and should continue moving forward, but what else makes it unique? Are there any perks that are exclusive to it that no other weapon can roll with? Are there raid exclusive bonuses tied to the weapon that can help out in the raid? The answer to these questions is no. Raid weapons in Destiny 2 are not special in any way. In fact, they're usually worse than any other commonly found legendary in the game. Besides a Midnight Coup or a God Rolled Nation of Beasts, you won't find a raid legendary that can do something that every other weapon can't already do. Now let's contrast that with some weapons from Destiny's first raid, the Vault of Glass. The infamous Fatebringer is a legendary hand cannon that was coveted as the best PvE hand cannon in the entire game. Now let's see why. Fatebringer had a devastating perk combination that was only available on this weapon, meaning it couldn't roll on any other hand cannon in the game. That perk combination being Outlaw and Firefly. Outlaw which would vastly increase your reload speed on a precision kill, and Firefly which causes the target to explode on a precision kill. Overall, great synergy and exclusive to the Fatebringer hand cannon. What else made it stand out? Well, it had an elemental burn applied, arc damage. Essentially, what this would be equivalent to now is allowing your kinetic weapons to have elemental damage in Destiny 2, meaning all three of your equipped weapons could have elements. It was incredibly strong at the time and was unique to every single raid weapon. There was one more thing that made Fatebringer stand out, as well as every other Vault of Glass legendary in the game. Oracle Disruptor. This weapon deals bonus damage to oracles in the Vault of Glass. Now if you've played the Vault of Glass, you know how useful this perk could be. It made almost every encounter easier because if you had a weapon with Oracle Disruptor applied, the bonus damage to oracles was incredibly high. Fatebringer was no doubt your best option for a legendary hand cannon in the Vault of Glass raid and any activity where arc shields were a problem. And weapons like Atheon's Epilogue and Vision of Confluence had similar advantages for their elements and weapon types. But let's take a look at some Crota's End weapons and what made them unique. Now besides the bones being glued onto the sides of the guns, weapons like Oversoul Edict, Abyss Defiant, and Black Hammer had standout perks that defined them. Oversoul Edict, for example, had a perk that allowed you to shoot through Knight's shield walls. Not anything too exciting, but still something. Abyss Defiant had a perk called Lich Bane, which would disorient Hive Wizards who were damaged by it, which could be useful in various situations. And the infamous Black Hammer which had the White Nail perk that was so overpowered and broken that it was nerfed in the Black Spindle and then later on with the Whisper of the Worm version of this weapon. Something else that made these weapons and all other Crota's End weapons special was their Hive Disruptor perk, which meant these weapons did increase damage to Hive Majors. Of course this would mean that Crota's End weapons were great for the raid, but also any activity with Hive being the main faction being fought, like various Strikes or Nightfalls. King's Fall had some pretty underwhelming weapons, but even these weapons had some usefulness. Every single King's Fall weapon came fitted with the Will of Light perk, which dealt bonus damage to taken enemies. 
and every weapon had Cocoon, which was essentially what auto-loading holster is today. These perks were only available on King's Fall weapons, and made weapons like the Columns Terminus an absolute powerhouse and arguably the best machine gun in the game. And finally, Wrath of the Machine where perks on the weapons were like advanced versions of perks in the game. First off, every Wrath of the Machine weapon came with Whirlwind's Curse, which dealt bonus damage to Fallen and would increase your agility stat. Already a great intrinsic perk. But weapons like the Chaos Dogma received a great synergizing perk combination of Triple Tap and Triple Double, which basically meant every time Triple Tap was procced, it would refund two bullets instead of one. Or the Aether Nova Fusion that doubled the effectiveness of the Army of One perk, meaning this was one of the best fusions in the game if you wanted to throw a lot of grenades. Now where are these kinds of perks on Destiny 2 Raid Legendaries? None of them are unique. None of them do anything useful inside or outside of the raid. Why even make raid weapons if all they do is look cool? So it's no doubt that raid legendary weapons are absolute cheeks in Destiny 2, but what about the armor? Well, you guessed it, the armor sucks too. Besides looking cool, what can this raid armor do? Anything? Any perks? Any draw beyond their appearance? Nope. Let's check back in with Destiny 1 where Bungie put a little bit more effort into the raid armor. Starting with the Vault of Glasses armor. Vault of Glass armor had exclusive perks, two that you could choose between for each armor piece. For example, the helmet had Vex Breaker or Vex Striker. Killing a Vex with a critical hit had a chance to spawn an orb, or killing a Vex with a melee attack had a chance to spawn an orb. The arms had either Anti-Oracle or Anti-Praetorian, which would give you additional super energy on either a Praetorian or Oracle kill. Small bonuses for sure, but definitely noticeable and helpful in the Vault of Glass raid or any Vex activity in the game. Crota's End Armor had bonuses too, like the Helm that granted increased weapon damage against the Oversoul, or the Gauntlets that granted one of three perks, Hive Breaker, Hive Striker, and Hive Destroyer, which granted chance at an orb based on what you kill the Hive with. In Year 2 and beyond, the perks on the Raid Armor became a little bit more advanced, with King's Fall Armor being able to grant reload speed in the Aura, increased armor and agility while torn between dimensions, and other taken damage bonuses on orb pickup. Wrath of the Machine armor granted great bonuses like taking half damage while carrying the SIVA charge, speed boosts while carrying cannons, and various other bonuses when killing a fallen like increased heavy ammo drops. Where are the perks like these for raid armor? Armor that makes the raid easier, that also extends to other activities like nightfalls depending on your enemies. Raid armor was some of the best due to perks like these. Why aren't raid armor set perks in Destiny 2? Oh yes, I forgot. Raid mods. How exciting. Who doesn't love the mod system of D2? It's almost as good as the token system. Raid exotics in Destiny 2 though have been admittedly not too bad. Legend of Acreus is a pretty good gun in certain situations, 1k voices is an awesome weapon, Anarchy is a must have, Divinity is pretty cool, but Taraba is just... I mean what the hell is this? It's almost as bad as pre-buff Necrochasm. Raid exotics should continue to be rare and awesome, like 1k voices. Not everyone likes RNG drops, but I think they're great for raids. It gives people something to chase. I just think that after a certain number of clears, the odds should go up more and more, just like they've done recently with 1k and Anarchy. Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 raid exotics have been pretty good so far, and I hope they continue to be worth chasing in Beyond Light. Now what needs to be done for raid loot to make it worth chasing? Well, like I mentioned, exclusive perk combinations for weapons could be a good start. In Beyond Light, allow for perk combinations on, let's say, the new hand cannon that are unattainable on any other weapon. Maybe it doesn't have to be some crazy, deadly combo. Maybe it's a little bit situational, but at least something unique. And do that for all the weapons in the raid, and maybe even add a perk similar to Hive Disruptor, where you deal increased damage to certain enemy types. Raid armor should have perks applied. Retire the raid mods. Maybe it's just me, but mods suck. Running raids, people are just hoping for raid mods, and I gotta say, that's pretty boring. Running a raid for a mod rather than a certain armor piece or weapon is just straight up bad loot design. Raid armor should have perks that help with the raid encounters, like the wrath armor, and maybe receive a bonus when a full set is equipped so there's incentive to acquire and run a full set. Raid loot should be some of the best loot in the game and should have a purpose beyond raid mods or power leveling. Again, raids should have the best loot in the game. Right now, the easiest activities grant far better loot than any raid, and that's a problem. In Beyond Light, I hope to see the raid loot evolve a little bit more and be a little bit more relevant than it is in the current game. But let me know what you guys are thinking by leaving a comment down below. 
Also, leave a like on the video if you agree with anything that I said, and subscribe for more Destiny discussions. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.